Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's March the 17th, 2021. I'm Tim Apicella, your host for What Now America. This title is called Jim Crow Laws Backed by Popular GOP Demand. Uh, we've learned in the last uh, few weeks that a number of states have introduced over 258 laws across 43 states that is a direct response to what I call the big lie, Donald Trump's big lie that the election was stolen, that there were forces at work in all these states, especially the swing states, that um, his le the legitimacy of his reelection was thwarted and the election was stolen from him. And that's the background to why we are seeing a avalanche of new laws being introduced by GOP legislation. Uh, and uh, many of these, these laws are being compared to the old Jim Crow laws. Well, I've looked at old Jim Crow laws and to some degree uh, that might be possibly partly true, but on the most part, it's, it's not. Um, Jim Crow laws back in the day, uh, you had to have um, property rights. You had to own property in order to vote. You had to basically um, pass literacy tests. You, uh, in some cases, had to um, have your, your ancestors uh, vote. And if they didn't vote uh, prior to 1879, uh, or excuse me, 1869, then you weren't eligible to vote. Things like that were part of the Jim Crow laws. But the two that uh, were Jim Crow laws that I think are applicable to where we're at today is one is the, um, the registration process and how that is now being uh, complicated, particularly with state ID requirements and onerous state ID requirements. And then the other one is uh, basically um, access to the ballot box. And we're gonna talk about that and, and many things more, including the, the new proposed HR1 in the um, House of Representatives, uh, a new bill that not only addresses voting rights, but also ethics and government. So we'll get to that. I'd like to introduce my guests. Uh, we have Jay Fidel. Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to What Now America. Morning, Tim. So Jay, um, we have 258 laws that are being introduced. We're across 43 states. Uh, and a lot of these states are, are, are ruled by both the House and Senate of, of GOP and a GOP governor. Uh, most likely these laws are gonna pass. And then we have between now and 2022 election to either have them challenged in court, which, you know, that, that process is lengthy and how the appeal process is lengthy and until it works up into higher court systems. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? You know, <clears throat> I hadn't thought about it, but you're right about the lengthy part. If I'm a Republican legislature or governor and I pass these laws, and, um, you know, the ACLU or somebody interested in voting rights challenges the laws in my state, the Republican, um, you know, anti suppression of voting laws and so many of them different kinds. But we're in a civil war, you know, over voting now. Um, then what I do is I try to hold up. I try to delay it. I take every step I can to delay it so that it, it doesn't get into an appellate situation. Um, and that way I have pandemonium and chaos around the country, which is what they're shooting for. They want chaos by 2022. They want to be able to, um, you know, upset any Democratic victories. And it's really, uh, it's awful. I, I can't tell you how awful it is because everybody will say the same thing. You know, voting is at the core of our democracy. That's what it's built on. Uh, the majority rules. Um, but the majority is being perverted as it was in 2016. 2020. And it, although I don't want to sound paranoid about this, uh, I, I believe um, that it's in Trump's best interest to create chaos. And he's behind it, his base is behind it. But more than that, I believe the Russians never stopped after 2016 and 2020. And they're busy, busy about trying to foment chaos on these um, Republican initiatives to suppress the voting. It, it is remarkable to think that so many people in the country would like to suppress the vote, recognizing that all of the patriotic ideals, everything we ever learned in school was about, was about the right to vote. So I think there's another set of factors working here. It's not just the Republican Party. It's not just Trump. 
somebody out there is using propaganda and, uh, and uh, social media to try to divide people on this and foment unrest on the issue. Uh, well, so, you know, there's a lot of other things to discuss today, but, but that is the primary, most high priority in the country as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, let's look at some of the specifics of what some of these states are doing. Georgia alone has introduced 22 bills. Uh, Arizona has also introduced 22 bills. And some of the ones that stand out um, as a glaring example of why they're scared. And remember, it's not just the big lie that they believed uh, in Donald Trump, but they know that their ideas, their platform, which actually they don't have a platform anymore. They, they didn't have a platform in the last election. But they know by demographics that it's a losing situation for them to win elections. And until they adjust their platform and their ideas and their policies, they probably won't have the demographics to back up um, the vote, to win the votes. And so what do you do to win an election? You know, the only other equation, as one, um, one politician said, is it's a zero-sum game. And if we can't win on the basis of merit and our ideas, we're going to have to win on the basis of keeping the other side from voting. And that's what they're trying to do. It's so, cheating uh, is what it is. If, if well, you can't win is. legitimately, then cheat. That's, and Trump and that's, has always cheated in business and in, in the presidency. Um, and his followers are following him on that. OK, well, let's look at some of the examples of how they're trying to cheat, because that's I agree with that, that exact word. Um, one bill says that you can only get a, a, an absentee ballot if you're over 65 you're disabled, or you're observing a religious holiday, or you, um, and that's it. That's the only basis now to get a mail-in ballot. Any other reason is, is not acceptable. Uh, you look at Georgia and some of the stuff, and they want to restrict early voting. They want to reduce the time that a request, if you are going to request a, a mail-in ballot, they want to uh, shorten that and truncate that, that time period in which you can get a ballot. Uh, they want to uh, reduce the hours of the election on election day. They want to shorten that up. They want to eliminate Sunday, which is a huge thing in um, the southern states where there's a high African American population. And uh, you know the old adage is souls to the polls. And af after people go to church on Sunday, they 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 go and, and rally to the voting booths. And uh, they want to eliminate Sunday voting. Uh, they also want to ban state college voting for, for students. They know that that typically is a more democratic um, vote category of, of students. So they want to eliminate on-campus voting. Uh, they want to stop same-day registration for voting. They want to stop that. And they certainly, in some states, it's going to be a misdemeanor if you bring water to anyone standing in line or food. That's, that's they want my favorite it, one, Tim. That's yeah, they, they want to make it as uncomfortable as possible and they want to discourage um, people to turn out and vote. So yeah, there's, it, it is cheating, if, Jay, if and I'm glad you said that word. the total of this, it's chaos. Why? It's not just that there are these various disparate, ridiculous statutes being adopted across the country. And they may be just a few people submitting them, introducing them into, into the legislators. And just a few Republican <coughs> governors who are you know, signing them. But they're getting through. And what, what troubles me is that the average citizen, especially uh, you know, the black or brown citizen, gets confused. What are my rights? Can I vote? Will I be permitted to vote? Or are these guys going to stand in the way? How do, I, how do I chart a course through all these obstacles? And I think the result is, A, people won't know how. There's a, so much. It creates disinformation, right? Um, so, and it's going to be hard to correct that, you know, in the public conversation. But B, I think it's going to turn a lot of people either off or radical, one or the other. I think yeah. we have a tinderbox, a racial well, tinderbox in, in the country anyway. It, I think in Georgia, in, in the last election, uh, the, the Senate election, it motivated people. And thanks to Stacey, Stacey Abrams and uh, her organizations, um, it actually incentivize people to get out of their chair and vote because they are angry that this this blockage was taking place. So uh, you're right, it could go either way. Either they're just churn off or they get energized and, and do it. I'd like so, to add one other point. You know, I mentioned before that this chaos uh, is going to exist until some rational appellate courts, um, you know, strike these bills. But that may take a year, 
two years. Well, let's. It's yeah. only a nanosecond between now and 2022. And query, this is the big question. Will it get to the Supreme Court in time to make a difference? And will the Supreme Court vote in favor of voting rights? It's not totally clear. Remember, it's a, it's a six to three Supreme Court. Now, they did the right thing on Trump's attempts to overturn the election. But query, A, whether they will do that again here, because these are all such outrageous bills. But B, will it be in time? If they decide shortly before the election, the damage will already be done. Good point. I'd like to take that point and uh, direct that to Winston. Um, there is a proposed HR1 bill that is to address election security and, and these type of um, ridiculous things that these states have introduced. And uh, HR1, a federal law, will trump, uh, no pun intended, but will trump uh, some of these state laws if they pass. And one of them is to ensure security. Uh, the federal support uh, of the voting system will oversight of election vendors and also address some of these laws that are, are prohibiting those who wish to vote. Um, do we have a chance of HR1 passing the federal, uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate? Interesting question. I saw that Joe Biden is reconsidering something to do with the uh, uh, you know, filibuster, which I thought was um, interesting. Just, I think just the, the mention of it probably is, I, I, which it has pluses and minuses for sure. Really, I, it, it's, it's sad that we even have to have this conversation, isn't it? Just yes, that, it is. This is you know, like Soviet tactics to try and cow your population um, into not voting, into not uh, expressing just a basic fundamental right. Here in Hawaii, we don't have this. We live in a free state that allows, that encourages us. In fact, there's a bill before our, our um, legislature that says, when you register for a state ID or a driver's license, it is required for, that you be that you opt out of being a, a, a voter unless you are somehow otherwise disqualified. Um, and I, I, I think I'm glad you bring that up, Winston. Winston, I'm glad you bring that up because that is a provision of HR1 that there would be automatic registration across the nation in every state. Well, I, you know, ideally it would. It, it, uh, who knows? The Supreme Court might take this and say, this is, these are states' rights. They have the right to set their own thing. Or they might say, actually, this is a right that's guaranteed um, across the land. This has been an interesting court in its, in its rulings so far uh, with what they did with uh, Donald Trump. So. While I don't expect them to um, fall on the liberal side of the perspective uh, of the of the spectrum, they very well may view this as a conservative principle that needs to be upheld and maintained. It'll be interesting to see if that happens or not. Um, just the fact that that uh, Joe Biden's introducing it is enough for the the Republicans now to oppose it. I mean, it could it's a chicken in every pot, but it's it's also that they have stated that if they have people being able to vote freely, they will never win an election again. And I think what they really need to do is take the hard look within and say, how do we need to move our party right. so that we can gain back the electorate, so that we do have principled conservatism, so that we can regain the, what do they call the Biden Republicans or, um, you know, uh, folks that, that would be a, a appealed to by some principal conservatism. And maybe, maybe that will happen as Donald Trump fades from, um, from our memories as much as possible and certainly airtime. So I, I would be interested to see if, if the uh, H1 passes or the H, uh, is it HR1 or? Uh, the, 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 HR1, and then it's S. HR1. Yeah, then it's S1, I think, for the Senate. It's a no brainer. It's, yeah. it's basic for democracy. Uh, how yeah. we cannot do it is, is incredible. But yeah, I mean, and when you're talking about not giving out water to people in a line, we got more serious issues to deal with. <laughs> we do. Just, yes, yeah. we do. We have to address Dr. Seuss in those horrible books of Dr. Seuss. So <laughs> and, Mr. and Mr. Potato Head. Yes, yeah, Mr. Potato Head. Okay, thank you, Winston. Hey, Stephanie, I saw you react when I was talking about um, HR1. Um, Particularly um, when we were talking about uh, automatic registration, I saw you kind of react to that. What are your thoughts about HR1 or, or some of these uh, crazy bills that some of these states are trying to, to get through on voting restriction and suppression? 
Well, I thought Winston's points were just excellent. And uh, I mean, my extreme question is, is, is this a setup for, you know, getting back into civil war stuff, the state's right versus, you know, the feds. I, I don't know whether we would have um, even though it's constitutional and a marker of democracy, I, I really wonder what will happen if that's pushed as a federal requirement. I, I mean, yeah. that, that's the question there. So it, that could really uh, rise up and um, get serious. Um, I know that um, there's um, concern about all this anarchism, uh, but also going along with that is the Republicans, as I was reading some news um, articles, because this morning are looking like they regret missing the boat here on, on the um, American Recovery Act. So um, it looks like they're thinking all of their, their um, shouting and hollering against it is, is not taken because, you know, over 60% of the population is delighted. So um, they're beginning to think, you know, and the Russians were, uh, you know, chipping in on this and trying to present uh, Biden as so irresponsible and still with all the problems that they brought up about him in the past. So I think that um, they're going to be changing their tact um, from from that. And they, they may have actually been be, been wounded by that. I mean, that that may have been. A well, I, I think it was actually 70 percent. It was even higher on the on the Pew poll that 70 percent, both Democrat and GOP love this, love the idea. So I think you're right. I think it's backfired on them horribly. Yeah. Well, I wanted to just mention on this, the, the state, um, on all of these uh, voting um, rules that they're trying to put in, new, new um, statutes and uh, legislation that they're trying to, to create. Um, I, just, I have a North Carolina background, um, and I, I'm, I'm the, a cousin, a Dalton was lieutenant governor of North Carolina, then he was running for governor. And then the, the uh, Republicans came in that year and just swept the whole North Carolina uh, state into to reddishness. And I, I was so appalled. Well, not just because there was a known person going into to governance at that level and had been in as the lieutenant governor, but, but how could the people there, because when I was young going there, I was taught how to vote. They were about how to vote. You go and you vote that ticket and it's not a red ticket. But anyway, all of a sudden this whole thing was turned around. And um, so this this comes up again in hearing of these new legislative ideas. What at some point the state population has got to respond. I mean, it can't all be the state since the state government has got its control by Republicans. Can they really? misuse the people to that degree and that's going to be okay so we can come in and do all these stacy abrams thing and the dcc can come in and do all of its work and we can try i mean does anybody need educating on how you're not you can't have water if you stand in line voting these have gone to such ridiculousness that they reveal they totally reveal themselves as as well, so they do, they do stephanie and the problem is as jay pointed out and 2022 may not be enough time for the courts to get involved and say, no, you can't do that. And so we may have an election that doesn't, doesn't see an opinion from the, the Supreme Court. Um, that's what, what I'm- about, My point is, yes, we want the court in there, if they'll do it, but the people need to stop and say, wait a minute, this, this isn't gonna work and how, I mean, they, that was a majority Democrat state. And in, in these couple of years, it's been transferred. But how can these people be left with no voice? Do they really have no voice in these states where the, okay. the government is trying? Look at what they're right. doing to May I just say, may I answer that quickly? Uh, Stephanie, if the only voice that people have, short of going to the streets, is to vote. And if they if they can't register, they can't get to the polls, they're gerrymandered out, whatever it is, they can't vote. They are made powerless. And a lot of people will be made powerless because of the confusion generated by these bills. That's my answer to your question. Okay, well, we let me- Wisconsin governor tried to pull a lot of this stuff on people and they had to start carting in just, you know, thousands and millions of signatures. It, it takes that. I guess that's a good yeah. point, Jay, because I okay. guess it gets down to representation, does it? I, yeah. I want to get, I want to get, um, Thank you, Stephanie. I want to get Cynthia in on uh, one of the concepts here. 
And that is, um, a lot of these laws um, are going to require uh, stringent voter ID requirements. Now, this issue intersects with the um, immigration issue. And it's not just Republicans that feel it's not unwarranted to have a proper ID to verify you are who you are when you vote. And, but the problem is many people, and particularly uh, a lot of older seniors, uh, they don't have their birth certificate to prove their identification to get that state ID or to get that driver's license. You don't have to be a driver to get a, a, an ID from the state. Um, here's the problem though. In order to get your birth certificate, and I do a lot of genealogy, in some states, you have to show your ID. So how do you get your ID if you don't have your birth certificate? Um, mm -hmm. There's the conundrum in, in, in a lot of states actually, and, and not just uh, red states, in a lot of blue states, they have an ID requirement to get your own birth certificate. So do you think it's unreasonable, uh, Cynthia, for these states to require a recognized identification prior to vote? Well, I think that there are ways around that, yeah? Like when they register and they get their, their signature registered with the main office, right? Then that signature can be checked against that other signature, right? So when they go to register, the county clerk could then issue them a voter ID card, right? It's not an ID card where they need all that stuff, they go, oh, what do you need? You just need stuff that shows you live there, right? Uh, mail with your name on it, things like that. So why couldn't they do something else to get around that? I know here in Hawaii, because I work the polls every year, and I know here in Hawaii, we require ID. When people come to sign in, I take their ID and check it to see, make sure it's them. So I don't think it's that outrageous to expect the person voting to show that they are that person. That's a, it's a legitimate requirement, I think, but I don't know as it has to be a state ID, like a driver's license or like a, a state issued ID. Can it be a county clerk issued ID that's only used for voting? Um, Good point, I'm glad you brought that up. I think that's an excellent point. And I'm actually thankful you had the experiences uh, in the register business for voting because I think that's an innovative uh, way around this well, because the, not only is it time and effort to get this birth certificate but it's also money and that could be perceived as almost like a poll tax right. uh, that we had during the Jim Crow days uh, that you had to pay a certain amount of money just to vote right and one of the things I'm the most worried about in all of this ID thing is for Native Americans you know our, our focus is often in the news and everywhere else on the African-American experience and, and being the Jim Crow stuff. What about the Native Americans that have to have an address, a street address to vote? Now, wait a minute. A lot of the times on the reservations, they don't even have a street address or a street name for that matter. Good point, good point. So trying to really alienate Native Americans in all of this also. And it seems to me they should be able to make some sort of concession there also and let the reservation be their address right all right good point all right thank you i great answers hey switching gears here real quick jay um, we don't have too much time left but i want to get your opinion about how you think the vaccination process is going and how you think joe biden and the administration is doing with the help is here is he getting that message across and is it, is it sticking? Will he get points for this as an accomplishment of his administration in 2024? I think he's doing a good job, best he could, getting the message across, but there's a countervailing propaganda going on against vaccination. 30% <clears throat> of, of the military don't wanna take it. I don't know what that's about. Um, and an enormous number of Republicans don't wanna take it. And you know the, the lack of consideration for your fellow human being is extraordinary. It's not so much whether you get the disease, it's, it's that you get it and, and then you infect others. Um, furthermore, I mean, it, it, it doesn't take um, a scientist to know that if you have a lot of COVID in your community, you're gonna have a lot of 
va variants in your community, and that's going to create a, a whole new problem. <clears throat> Europe has got that problem now. People didn't were you know very reserved about taking the vaccines. Uh, a lot of people haven't taken the vaccines, so we get more cases. More cases equal more variants. I think, and and I think Fauci thinks too that this is going to result in another surge. So as hard as as Biden is trying, he's working against that same sort of back back channel thing uh, that is happening in the in the voting rights issue, uh, and they're fighting with him on something that is completely fundamental, fundamental public health, fundamental, well, you know, don't hurt your fellow human beings. You know, before this show, you and I were discussing uh, you know, Fox, particularly Tucker Carlson, casting doubt on these vaccines and, and persuading Americans that maybe they're not, it's not the best thing for them. And the issue that you prop appropriately brought up was, you know, I said, hey, maybe the FCC needs to get involved here and say, stop it because you're you're passing on false information about the value of a vaccine and public health. Uh, we had Twitter kick people off for spreading bad information about vaccines. We had Facebook do the same thing. And then you rightly so, so said, well, it's a First Amendment right issue. So we're, how do we stop the Tucker Carlson's of this world from discouraging uh, a known medical science uh, fact that this is going to be effective against COVID? How do we stop these kind of people? And is there a way to do it? That's the problem with people like Tucker Carlson. I mean, he is testing the First Amendment. He's pushing it to its limit. And he's, he's asking us, all of us, and the government and the courts to change the First Amendment to stop him. Um, because it's disinformation. People are dying as a result of what he says. He has his own bully pulpit. Um, and query whether we are nimble enough uh, to change the way the thing works. You know, uh, what did the talk bill say? He said, uh, democracy is tumultuous. Well, democracy allows Tucker Carlson to do this and it kills people. Is that what we want out of the First Amendment? Uh, I, think, I think there's a lot of pressure on the First Amendment for that reason. It's not only what he's saying, but it's the pushback to say, well, Tucker, you can't do that. You don't, you know, as Hugo Black of the Supreme Court said, uh, you can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater. How different is that from this? Good point. Uh, I'd like to take that exact point and, and direct that to you, uh, Winston. What are your thoughts about the Tucker Carlson's on uh, in the world uh, discouraging the use of a vaccine and casting doubt on it? Should the FCC try to step in and maybe it got, maybe gets challenged and goes to the courts and ultimately to the Supreme Court? But uh, is it a worthwhile effort for the FCC to say knock it off or not, or is it just the First Amendment right and? Let Tucker Carlson say and, and do what he wishes. You know, I, I, he, he's, it gives it oxygen the more you oppose it. So I think, you know, I was kind of shocked to even sit and not I want much credence to what the Donald has to say. He came out, get the vaccine. It's a good thing to do. And I think it was a yesterday or the day before his news. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I don't well, think it was that a his conditional followers are really statement, Winston. It wasn't an absolute statement, you know. Was it? it was like what he said in uh, Char Charlottesville. Um, you know, uh, uh, both sides have a point here, is what he said. Well, that that may be. I I and I didn't read the article because I don't want to give him any oxygen either. But um, I, I think you know people are going to be coming around to this. You look at Israel. They said. That's fine if you don't want the vaccine. You just can't enter a hospital, a doctor's office, a restaurant, a theater, uh, a bank, or anything else. Uh, what about an airplane, just, Winston? What about an airplane? An, until you agree to participate and not be, um, a, you know, sociopath essentially. Now I understand people are afraid of this. They think it's going to, you know, make them brain-eating zombies, and it may, it may. But if that's the case, we'll all deal with it then. But for right now, it looks like what it's doing is keeping COVID at bay. It's keeping people out of the hospital and not dying and not transferring this disease where half a million Americans alone have died. And so, you know, do the math. How many people are dying from COVID shots? It's so small that it's, 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 um, it, it's, I don't even want to give it uh, time. I understand people are leery of vaccines in general, but they were probably leery of electricity um, as well. So, uh, you, you know, I, 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 it's hard, hard to answer that sort of thing without just saying, you know what, folks, just go get your shot. And that's 
the end of the day, if they if they want to participate in society, Costco will ban them, Sam's Club will ban them, and they'll they'll have to get it eventually, or they'll just bow after a while. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, we've run out of time, so I want to go around the the table, and uh, Stephanie, your last thoughts uh, for this last week and the week to come, or anything else you want to opine about. Just am interested that Winston mentioned that Israel and maybe other countries, I haven't done the research on this, but I have found myself slipping into the no fly list, which is the no hospital list. If you don't have, if you have not followed the medical advice and recommendations, and it sounds like certainly commercial commercial and um, corporations are doing that. They're requiring, like you say, Costco won't let you in or maybe Safeway won't let you in. And then also getting down to actually our medical people are exhausted and they're really starting to revolt in terms of trying to, to get some more pay raises and some credit for what they've done. They're not getting very far and they may just leave the profession. I've heard some threats like that coming away from them. And once there's not enough man or nurses and doctors um, to man these are man and woman, uh, you know, our medical facilities, we are really up the creek. But anyway, so I don't know if we get got to get that draconian or not, because it, it does, it is a process and people usually move through it. And although they're always going to be diehards, you know, maybe uh, with uh, Biden and his the work he's doing and getting around and talking about things is going to move everybody along. You know, maybe Fingers. they don't understand the, the social cost of deaths and, and the and the and the impact of people's lives. Maybe they understand money more, and it's cost five trillion dollars thus far to um, for these these stimulus COVID stimulus packages, and it's going to cost a lot more if this continues. So anyway, let's uh, thank you, Stephanie. Let me, uh, well, Cynthia. Like how about let's have the hospital bill? Yeah, for there the you go. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay, that would be really yeah. interesting. Okay, uh, good point. Hey, Cynthia, uh, last comments, last thoughts. Um, I think it's important to um, have everybody make sure they go out and look into this joint statement from the Department of Justice and Homeland Security, assessing the impact of foreign um, interference in the 2020 election. Russia did it, China didn't. Okay. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Thank you. Thank there you. Was a, there's a British intelligence report that just came out that I think is very important. And it, they have discovered a whole Russian dis disinformation campaign that is um, completely weaponizing health information to undermine vaccine uh, security and to enhance the hesitancy. And it's totally just to you know, separate people and to, you know, to further divide people. And so I think it's important for people to remember to look through everything, read it all, right? All righty, I agree. We gotta go. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the hook. <laughs> the long one minute. Okay, wait. This is a good lesson in leadership. You just got to be completely honest. This is, a, I'm, this is Dr. Fauci saying this. Okay. And I quote. You've just got to be completely honest and true to yourself and to your principles, even though you're going to have to tell people some things that might be inconvenient truths. And inconvenient truths might put you at odds with people, but you've just got to be honest and true to yourself and not be afraid of the consequences. Once you're afraid of the consequences of telling the truth, you're done. Thank you, Cynthia. Jay? Um <laughs> now, what I've been thinking about the filibuster, I've been thinking about the, the, the fact that H.R. 1 cannot pass. None of uh, Joe Biden's initiatives can pass, uh, short of that um, special procedure, you know, the negotiated procedure. But most of them don't fall in the category of that procedure. Most of them are going to have to have a, you know, a vote. And under the filibuster, as it now exists, they won't, they won't pass because Republicans are sticking together. Mitch McConnell is keeping them together. Right. Mitch McConnell threatened, uh, what is it, a, a huge war if anybody tried to knock off the filibuster. He's yeah. trying to intimidate Joe Biden about it. Uh, but you know what I, what I think is the filibuster should go. Um, otherwise, Biden won't get anything through and he will have this voting problem on his hands in 2022. And the Republicans may well take, take the majority, both houses, in 2022, and then where we will be. 
Uh, so he's got to get these programs through. It's more important than the filibuster. Knock off the filibuster. Joe Very Biden's good. idea about a talking filibuster is like, I'm not sure that's going to work. My, my point is, it's got to go. The, the Democrats have got to get around this. All righty. Thank you, Jay, for your opinion. And um, point well made. Uh, Winston, you get the last word. Uh, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a great point, Jay. And he, there, there needs to be some real structural changes. And if they can't be put in through uh, getting 60 votes, but because it's just pure obstructionist rather than on principle, uh, there may need to be more uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. And if we're talking about the, the existential threat to our nation, we have to take that into consideration. Um, the other thing, you know, you I looked at Deborah Burks and in her interviews, and and after what Cynthia's quote just was, and as she was sitting there, and you know, she she said, "Oh, I felt so, like when the Donald was saying to inject the bleach and whatever," and I really wanted to say something, but I didn't know how to approach that, and I felt like I, you know, and I she must be racked with an incredible amount of guilt, but um, you know, I I, I felt sorry for her honestly. Um, and there was one more very important thing that I wanted to say, which was happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. We made it another year and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Pinch yourself if you're not wearing any green. Cynthia, you don't get to pinch yourself if you're wearing green. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Winston. Thank you, we've run out of time, or in fact, we've gone over our time, but we always do that because there's so much to talk about and so little time in which to do it. So. Thank you very much for joining us on What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Join us next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Aloha and happy St. Pat's Day.